What's up guys, welcome back to Kit Guru. We've got another build video for you today and as you probably already worked out, it's sponsored by NZXT. You also notice as well as we work through this build, there's going to be like a bit of a colour scheme theme going on. The reason that NZXT has sponsored this build is because they've got some new parts to show off. You'll probably recognise this case, this is the H510. It's been around for a while, there's been various different versions, there was the H510. 510 Elite that Leo reviewed. All that NZXT did with that really was swap the steel panel for a glass panel, throwing some RGB fans and an RGB LED strip and airflow was still pretty terrible. So the new version is this H510 Flow and you can quite obviously see what's happened is a new front panel again. So this front panel has a perforated metal mesh design and behind it is a dust filter. So this one should be a lot better in terms of airflow. We still only have on the top a single fan mount which is a little disappointing, but I think that's all that can be fitted in this case because it has that kind of trim panel that covers up cable management. So because Leo's already reviewed this, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the specifications. Um, I don't wanna just be repeating everything that Leo said about the case because me and Leo have similar views and opinions on cases. So I'll just give you a quick rundown of what's going on in this case really. So on the side here, you've got tempered glass side panel, captive thumb screw just at the top and then it just clips out and then to reinstall it just push it into place so that's nice that you don't have to take out a load of screws you could technically leave that back screw you know just loose if you wanted to because these clips do hold it on pretty well and you can see it's quite a heavily tinted panel as well so if you like to see right into your system and see everything that's going on, that might be too much of a heavy tint for you. So the H510 Flow should be available to purchase in the UK around about late October to early November. The reason I'm not very specific with that is because if you look on the scan website, you can actually pre-order the case now, but they're not expecting stock according to the website until the 12th of November. However, if you look on Novatech, you can pre-order from there as well, and they're showing like the 29th of October, so I'd expect the stock to arrive somewhere between those two times. It's going to be priced at $89.99, which is a little higher than the original price of the uh, of the standard H510 with the solid front. I think that was launched at around $74.99. However, I've been told from NZXT that the price of that is going to go up to $89.99 as well due to some increase in shipping container charges or something. So... You're looking at $89.99 for this uh, H510 Flow version. So it's a compact mid-tower chassis, got the usual minimalist, understated looks we expect from NZXT cases. It's obviously, like I've said, it's got this perforated airflow front panel. If you want to see how that comes off, it's pretty simple. Just clips out, uh, it's a tool-free removal, and then the dust filter pulls out pretty easily as well, so that's pretty easy to remove and clean then to put it back in you just slot it in at the bottom press it in at the top so nice and easy to remove that front panel unlike the elite you don't get any rgb in this case which i don't mind uh you just get a 120 mil uh, f fan at the front and then another uh, f fan at the back as well and as i've said up at the top here there's room for it, it looks like a 140 mil fan shame that you can't fit a 240 mil air up there but luckily in the front of the case though you can install a up to a 280 mil air or radiator and it's got a handy bracket that's removable so there's just two thumb screws on this bracket remove the thumb screws and then that bracket just pulls out obviously once you've disconnected the fan it just pushes back in place tighten up the thumb screw so that should make the front radiator installation a bit simpler. I'm not massively impressed with the front I.O. connectivity. You've just got a single USB Type A port and a single Type C port as well. I would have thought with all this space along the front here, it could at least have added another Type A port, but that's the way that NZXT's done it. So inside the case, it's a pretty open layout, but you've got this weird trim panel that covers up the cable management. And Undecided on that at the moment. I don't see you know, what's wrong with just like cutouts and grommets. 
but I'll uh, reserve judgment on that until I've actually built a system in it. Power supply shroud is vented. Not really sure why it's vented. I actually prefer like a solid power supply shroud because you can't see any like messy untidy cables in there. Plenty of other cutouts for cable management, a couple of big cutouts at the bottom and then a, a big one along the top as well. In terms of motherboards, you can install ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX boards in here. Maximum CPU cooler height is 165 millimeters and the maximum GPU length is 360 millimeters. Around the back, it's typical layout. So a 120 mil fan mount, rear IO, seven PCIe slots, and then a cutout for the power supply shroud. The other back panel, this is just a solid white panel in this case. This case is available in black or white. We've gone with the white one because that's the theme that we're going with for this build. So two captive thumb screws on this steel panel and then it just tilts and slides out. There's no sound deadening material or anything like that. Then around this side of the case, we've got some more cable management features. So there's this cable management channel that directs your 24 pin cable where it wants to go. Got a couple of cutouts for fan cables here. And you can see a, quite a big cutout along the top. There's another channel as well here that directs the EPS power cable in. Two removable 2.5 inch SSD mounts. Not thumb screws though. I don't know why. And usually quite simple when you've got thumb screws on them to remove, but you're gonna have to use a screwdriver if you want to remove those. And then down on the floor of the case, there's a 3.5 inch hard drive case. Looks like I can fit three drives in there. Little box there with some accessories screws and zip ties etc then on the bottom of the case there's some screws holding that 3.5 inch dry bane that allows you to adjust the position of it or if you want more space down there you could remove that completely it's also worth mentioning as well that you can see embossed into this mountain there's a reference to ddc and d5 so i'm guessing that you could remove that 3.5 inch dry bay and then possibly mount either a DDC or D5 pump down there. Although I'm not sure that this case is really optimized for custom cooling with just having that 280 mil mount at the front for radiators. Also on the bottom of the case as well, as is pretty normal, you've got a dust filter that covers the power supply vent and just pulls out from the rear, slots in place. So that's it really for the H510 flow. All I can see really is this new front panel and uh, the vent has been removed from the side panel. So that's pretty much it. NZXT also wanted us to look at some new coolers that are about to launch as well. I use that term new lightly because these again, like the H510, these are kind of revised versions of coolers you can already buy. So the Kraken X63 and Z63 are both 280 mil coolers. You can get these in 240s, 360s as well. And the difference between the older versions and these new ones is that they're all white. Fans are white as well. So with these, you get the RGB fans. So these are the Air RGB2 fans. The X63 is the one with the NZXT RGB logo on the CPU block. That, I believe, is available to purchase now from places such as Scan. That's priced at $174.99. And the Z63, you can pre-order that now, but I believe that isn't available in terms of stock until around the 12th of November. That is priced at $239.99. The only real difference between these and the original Kraken X and Z3 series is the color. So you can see they're all completely white radiators articulating fitting so that helps with the orientation the one i've got on the desk is the z63 so that's the one with the lcd panel you can bring up hardware information uh, put animated gifs videos and customize photos on there as i've mentioned as well they come with the air rgb2 140 mil fans and there's also a rgb version now of the matte black Z63. So these are based on the Acetech Generation 7 pump. I did um, an in-depth review a while ago on the original black versions of this. I don't expect performance to be really any different with this white coating. So they are a good solid performing AO. In the uh, box you get the Intel backplate, you get an AMD upper mounting bracket. The Intel upper mounting bracket comes pre-installed and it's just a, a twist lock 
fit to swap them over. You also get a bag full of fan screws and washers and smaller screws. Standoffs for Intel 11.5X and Intel LJ1200. I've noticed they don't come with an LJ1700 mount in the box, but I've been told by NZXT that any of these units manufactured from November, they will include a mounting kit for LJ1700. Also in the box you get an AM4 mounting kit and a bag full of cables, so SATA power cable, a USB cable to communicate with the NZXT cam software, fan cables, fan splitters, and everything else you need to install. We'll get the chance to look at the X63 a bit more later when I do the build, because I'm actually planning on using that one for the build. NZXT has also launched a new range of power supplies. This is the C-Series Bronze. This is the C750, so 750 watt. This is also available in 550 and 650 watt. This one is priced at 89.99 MSRP, and as the name suggests, it's an 80 plus bronze certification comes with a five-year warranty and it's a semi-modular design so that means some of the cables are permanently attached so the 24 pin one of the pcie cables and one of the eps cables are permanently attached and then you get a bunch of other modular cables some more pcie more eps and sata power cables and they can be plugged in and out as and when you need them the plan with this when i heard about these new power suppliers was to maybe sleeve the cables with some PET sleeving in white but that's going to be a bit tricky with these that are permanently attached to the system so I thought maybe I'll just sleeve a couple of these PCIe modular cables the only problem with that is the PET sleeving that I ordered has not arrived yet so I've got a 24 pin black and white extension cable I think that's from Silverstone luckily I've found out that the, uh, the pin out on these so the pin out on the NZXT cables is the same as some of these white Corsair ones that I've got from another build. So I think they should look good. So I'm going to use those in the build and we should have some nice white matching cables. So before I actually start the build, I just want to have a quick rundown of the hardware that we're going to be using. Obviously the case, power supply and the CPU cooler are the ones I've already mentioned from NZXT. Motherboard is this NZXT N7B550. I think Luke reviewed this not so long ago. Check that review out if you want to see how this performs. CPU is an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, 12 cores, 24 threads, high performance CPU. For memory, it's Corsair Dominator RGB Platinum. The white version as well so that should match in well with the system for the gpu it's the palette game rock geforce rtx 3070 unfortunately it's not a white gpu we couldn't get hold of one but at least it's got a white box and then for storage the windows installation drive is this 500 gigabyte corsair mp600 pcie gen 4 so nice and fast and then for additional storage you've got this Kioxia XG6P 2 terabytes only PCIe Gen 3 but 2 terabytes is a lot of capacity for additional storage okay then let's get on with the build so as always first things first get this CPU installed AMD Ryzen 9 5900X put it in the socket easy enough one thing that I kind of like about this motherboard is the way it looks it's got the typical NZXT understated look with these covers over everything. So these are like got magnets on the front and then a clip at the back. It's clip them in and they stick in place. So they're the covers for the M.2 drives. The only problem with these, they look nice and everything, but they kind of force you into running your M.2 with no heatsink, which is a bit of a problem when you've got something like this Corsair MP600 that gets pretty toasty when it's worked hard. So we're gonna have to run this bare. So luckily this comes off quite easy this heatsink. There's just like four tabs that you press back with your fingers. And then it just comes apart like that. Pop out the screw. This is a Windows drive, so I'm gonna put this in the top slot. Secure it in place with the screw. And then this Kioxia XG6P. This is gonna be our additional storage drive. That one's going to go in the bottom M.2 slot. Secure that one down with the screw. Put these panels back on again. No passive cooling on those M.2 drives, but it does look quite slick looking, that motherboard. Next is the memory. This is a 4 times 8 gigabyte kit. So 32 gigabytes in total. DDR4, 
3600 megahertz C18. While we're at this stage as well, I'll remove the stock AM4 mounts. And then just screw these four AM4 mounting posts in position. It's a good idea to get this bit prepped up ready before the board goes in the case. So just pop those in position. Sometimes as well, you could always maybe at this point install the actual CPU block. I don't think I'm gonna do that in this case because it is quite a compact case. There's not a load of room and I wanna mount it, the radiator to that front bracket as well. So I'm not gonna install the CPU block in this case, but sometimes you can. Sometimes you've got space to install the CPU block and then you can lift the board with the, uh, the radiator and everything attached, then screw your radiator in place after if you've got a bit more space. The plan was originally I, I was thinking maybe I could use the extra two of these Air RGB2 fans that came with the Z63 and put one in the top and then one in the back. The only problem is these are 140 mil and the uh, back fan mounting only accepts up to 120 mil fans. So the white ones won't fit in the back, which is a bit of a shame. And I'm not sure whether it's a good idea to install one white one up the top and have a white one and black one near each other. So what I might do is just take the, the Air F fan that came pre-installed to the front of the case, move that up to the top, install the AO in the front, and I'll just have to have these two white fans at the front with the RGB, hopefully glowing through that perforated front panel. So as I showed earlier, just loosen off these two thumb screws, and then this radiator bracket should just pull out, which it does. I've disconnected the fan. I can uh, refit this fan up in the top here. Screw that in there. Remember which way round this goes. So that's the top. I want the radiator on one side and the fans on the front here. There's little cutouts to push the fan cables through. There's also this little RGB cable as well that needs connecting up. So this just links the RGB lighting on both fans. One connection plugs to the out terminal and then the other one We'll plug into the in terminal on the other fan. Then we need to try and hold this all together while installing these screws. So now I can pass the fan cables through the other cutouts in the chassis frame. And hopefully this bracket containing the AIO should go back in position pretty easily. It's a bit of a squeeze, but it does go back in just. Definitely not the easiest fan radiator bracket I've ever used, but it does fit in just. There you go, you can see it's in place, screwed in position, fan cables come through, so we're ready to drop the motherboard in. Motherboard's in, it wasn't too difficult, but it is. It is rather tight up there, I can see why there's no top AIO mount really. Uh, you'd really struggle to get radiator in there and clear like the VRM MOSFET, uh, you know, the heat sink on the VRM MOSFET and stuff like that. Memory as well, probably be in the way, but it looks like there's still just enough room to connect up your EPS power cables and fan cables at the top. So get that motherboard screwed in position. Next we can install the CPU block. You need to take this plastic cover off and then remove the Intel bracket so that we can install the AMD bracket. So that's ready. There's no need to apply any thermal compound to the CPU because you can see it's already pre-applied. And it's just the four thumb screws that hold it in place. Just tighten them up finger tight until the uh, CPU block 
contact with the CPU. And once you've got some contact, just tighten them up from corner to corner to get even pressure. You probably can't see on the camera, but the NZXT logo is in the wrong orientation, but we can just rotate this top cover and then that puts it in the correct position. To get these cables plugged into the CPU block, I've actually had to remove one of the sticks of memory. It's a bit tight there. So I'm just gonna see if it actually fits back in position. You can see that it does, but those cables are very close. I've actually had to kind of bend the USB cable. And the other thing as well is it doesn't leave you really any space to sort of took these cables down out of the way so they just have to kind of trail up the side of the the last memory module and then over the top of the vrm heatsink and then out the back it looks a little bit untidy it could have been a better solution for that but that's just the way it is really with these kind of aos that have uh, lcd screens and then you know all controlled by specific software so they are a bit untidy, but we can continue at least. I'll plug in the header for the pump into the board up the top. Try and tuck that cable away as best as possible. The other thing as well, we've got this fan installed up here. So if you don't, you don't tidy your cables up, that's the problem you'll have. So you just need to make sure with this case, because there's such little space between the top of the motherboard and the top of the case, just be careful where your cables are going because they could quite easily get trapped in a fan and you've got problems then. I think what I'll do just to make sure that nothing gets trapped in that fan, I'll just try and zip tie them all together out of the way of the fan like that. Along the top edge of the motherboard, there's two system fan headers. So I've connected the top and the rear exhaust fan up to those two headers. You can see also I've installed the 24 pin black and white cable extension. If you spin it round, you can see that this channel that's designed to direct the 24 pin cable in the right position, um, it's not really useful if you're using a cable extension. You can't get this, you know, the, uh, the connector in there. So what I've done is I've just used that as kind of an anchor point to get a zip tie to it. So it's held in there, not brilliant, but it works kind of. So we've got the uh, PCIe cable that's permanently connected to the power supply. I've just bundled that up because we're not going to be using that. We will be using one of the EPS power and we'll be using the 24 pin, but that might need to be bundled up a bit just to be shortened so it reaches here. Uh, the EPS, uh, it's an eight pin and four pin on this motherboard. So I'll use that one that's permanently connected and then I'll have to use um, one of the modular cables as well. I'm also gonna attach a SATA power cable and then we've got these two white Corsair cables that are gonna be the PCIe cables. I'm going to remove these Corsair cable combs. They're all right, but I don't really like the look of them. They're a bit too chunky. I've got some others that'll be a bit more subtle so let's install the power supply so i'll connect up that sata power and the other eps power pcie cables like i said these are not extension cables these actually plug in directly to the power supply and i checked these out before we started this video pinouts are exactly the same between the corsair cables and the nzxt one so that was a stroke of luck so power supply Slides in from the side pretty easily actually. That's good, plenty of space for the power supply to slide in. Pop some screws in. Screws in from the back as normal. Sometimes you get the uh, little panel that pops off of the back of the case. You screw that to the power supply first and then screw that to the case. But with this, it's just insert the power supply from the side and then screw it in position. That's the power supply fitted to the case. I wouldn't say it's installed because as you can see, we've still got plenty of cables to sort out and manage. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to spend a bit of time on managing these cables, try to make them look as neat and tidy as possible. It shouldn't be too bad in this case. It looks like he's got reasonable space and areas for cable management. So we'll sort the cable management out install the GPU 
and then we should be about good to go. Build's complete, it's definitely got a unique look to it. I've never built a system that looks like that before. There's no hiding away from that minimalistic look that NZXT seems to have going on with most of their products. It's not a bad white build, it's a shame we couldn't have got a white GPU. If there's any connoisseurs of white builds out there, let us know in the comment section what you think of this one. Is it up to standard? Overall, it wasn't a bad case to build in. Um, there are a few issues shall we say that i had with it lining up of the gpu wasn't brilliant i had to move the pcie slot cover below the gpu to get the screw holes to line up and never usually have to do that with that card the main issue for me was cable management up at the top the cutout at the top to get the eps power cable through wasn't really big enough and if you push your eps power cable through pulling it back it gets stuck and it was a bit of a pain. Not much space up at the top there either. We only got a 120 mil, 25 millimeter thick fan in the top there. And it was really awkward plugging in the EPS power and any fan cables and stuff like that up there. It is a compact case, so it's not a great surprise, but if you were to put a 120 AO in there, to be honest, I don't think you would be able to get one in there it'd be a struggle. And the cable management around the back of the system as well. I can imagine it is okay if you're in NZXT's perfect cable management world and you're using that plastic channel for your 24 pin, but if you slightly deviate away from that perfect world, like we did with the extension, that channel becomes absolutely useless. And if you remove that plastic channel, then there's nothing there to help you with cable management, no eyelets or anything like that to tie the cables down to. Like I say, if you're in the perfect world where cable management does exactly what NZXT want you to do, um, it's probably all right, but 
If not, then you're in trouble. Also, that mounting bracket system for the front fans and AO, it's a bit fiddly. I found it quite awkward to fit it back into place with the radiator and stuff there. It would probably be easier to do it without that. But this isn't really a review as such. It's more of a build video, so who cares what I think. So the main reason we're here now is to see if the airflow's improved with this front panel. So what I'm going to do is run my usual thermal performance tests. Uh, I'll have Cinebench R23 running the same as Heaven Benchmark, so that should give enough load on the system, on the CPU and the GPU, to heat up the whole system. I'm going to run that test in a, in a loop like for 30 minutes, so that'll again give the whole system enough time to get up to its steady state temperature. One thing I want to do really is test the difference between the new perforated airflow front panel and the old solid front panel. However, I don't have one of the original H510s with the solid panel, so I'm going to improvise a little. So what I've done is I've just stuck a piece of A4 paper to the front of that perforated panel. I've sealed it round the edges with masking tape, so now we've got an NZXT H510 with a white front panel. No, seriously though, that should replicate the uh, the stock or the original solid front panel of the H510 pretty well. And also because the original H510 had that vent on the right hand side panel, I've just pulled the panel away and left a small gap and then just taped the panel in position just for this test. So I'll run that thermal performance test now with the case as it is in its modified kind of state. Uh, I'll also install this tempered glass side panel as well. And then uh, when we've run the test with the case like this, I'll put it back to its default configuration with the open airflow front panel, run the test again, and then I'll be back with some results. So the case front panel is back to normal again. I think it looks better like that than it does with the A4 paper on. Uh, that also means that we've completed the thermal performance test and the results were quite dramatic. The chart's showing the delta temperature, so that means that the ambient room temperature has been deducted from the actual temperature readings. And as you can see, we have dropped a massive 13 degrees C off the CPU temperature with the perforated front panel. And also a healthy 5 degrees C lower on the GPU temperature as well, so that shows the perforated front panel is doing a really good job with airflow. And it's very similar with the noise levels as well, with the perforated front panel fitted the system runs approximately four decibels quieter which means that a case that has good airflow also helps to reduce noise levels as well because the GPU fan isn't having to work as hard to keep the GPU temperature down and that is where the most of the noise was coming from in this system from the GPU. Found in the past with thermal testing of cases, if you remove the side panel, front panel, the uh, GPU temperature drops and therefore the fans don't have to work as hard. So you actually got a quieter system, the more open it is. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this NZXT white build video. If you have, don't forget to subscribe and hit that big thumbs up button. Also, if you want to help support Kit Guru, head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website. If you want to pick up any of these white NZXT parts, if you are a fan of the minimalist white look, these will be available towards the end of October, early November. Thank you for watching. See you next time.